Hey, welcome to week three of the series that we're in called Better Together. My name is Justin Polk. I'm the campus pastor at our Justin Northlake campus. And I want to start off by asking you guys a question in your small group. Do you have a favorite movie? One of my favorite movies is the movie Toy Story. I love the story. I love the characters. I love everything about it. I love where the characters go and where they end up at the end of the story. But the movie starts with this group of toys, right? And they're, they're together. They're in a group and they're led by this cowboy whose name is Woody. We've all seen the movie. It's great. And, and they have a, a good click going on. They've got a good rhythm going on. And in comes this new guy, the Space Ranger, Buzz Lightyear. He comes in and he's shiny and he's got wings and he can fly. He's got a laser beam in his wrist. He's super cool. And, and Woody and Buzz kind of start their relationship off with, with tension. But at the end of the movie, they've they basically established very lifelong relationship, a, a great friendship, and that group is, is better together. They're able to do more things together. They're able to accomplish greater things together. The, there's a verse in Ecclesiastes 4 that kind of speaks to that. It's verses 9 through 12. It says this, Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If, e if either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. See, Buzz and Woody, they, all those toys, they understood that. They lived kind of that verse out. I know it's a, a, a movie about toys, but it, it still speaks to me in the fact that it's a very beautiful and inspiring and exciting story. It, it's really love being lived out through that story. Jesus tells us two things, right? He tells us to love God and he tells us to love others. Not to just like other people or to tolerate other people, but to love them. Why does he tell us that? Because love is, is big. Love is, is powerful. Love can help us bond together. It unites us. There's some lessons uh, of love that I want to talk to you guys about in regards to your small groups that comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 7. In reference to love, it says this, love, it, it always protects, it always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. I want you to take a second in the room that you're in, and I want you to look around at all the people that are surrounding you. I want you to take a second, look to your left, look to your right. These people, this small group, that's your flock. That's your tribe, your crew, your mates, whatever you call it. Your group can live out that verse. They can live out 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 7. And it starts with this. Love always protects. We want to start with protection. We want to protect each other. So what are some ways that we can protect each other with love? Well, in our small groups, we can create a safe environment. We can pray for one another regularly. And we are surrounding ourselves with, with people who love one another and we got to open ourselves up. We also have to be a, a trustworthy person when it comes to our small groups. Proverbs 11, verse 13 says this, A gossip betrays confidence, but a trustworthy person keeps a secret. Man, our groups are a place for protection. Our, our groups are a place where we can really love one another, where we can protect one another. The definition of protection is to keep safe from harm. But in regards to small groups, it's really this. It's really to, to cover with silence. We want to make sure that what happens in our small groups stays in our small groups and that we're looking out for each other. And here's the thing. When we surround ourselves with those who live out love, man, we begin to make incredible relationships. We, we begin to really form powerful bonds, powerful relationships that can change everything. Here's the thing about protection. Protection creates trust. See, love always trusts. And another word for, for trust in regards to our, our small groups is that we believe in one another, that we want what is best. In fact, we believe in each other. We believe for each other in our small groups. I can tell you that uh, in my group, my, my flock, I really trust my flock. And it allows me to be, it allows me to be vulnerable, it allows me to believe in people, the people that are with me, that we're in it together. It allows me to open up. I can be real. I can have deep conversations with those people. And I know that I can trust them. 
I know that, that they, they're willing to protect me. They're willing to trust what I have in that group. And, and when we do life, man, it is powerful together. See, trust, when you trust one another, trust then leads to hope. Love always hopes. And that's the thing about, about hope. Hope builds community. Hope really means that we're going to have high expectations for someone, specifically in our group. Love always begins that something good is going to happen. It always begins with something magical and powerful happening. At all of our campuses, we've done child dedications. We've been a part of that. We've seen them. Uh, and, and I did one not too long ago with this wonderful girl. We dedicated this wonderful little girl named Marin. And Marin's parents are Brandon and Megan. And so I'm going through and I, I'm, I'm having the church stand up and together we're, we're united and we're, we're going to be together as one as we dedicate Marin to the Lord. But something different happened that day that I hadn't experienced. See, I look over at Megan and Megan has tears running down her face. And then at the end of it, everybody sits back down and, and Megan and Brandon and Marin, they go to the back of the room. But what happened next was different. See, the entire small group that they're in stood up. And they stood up organically, and then they just all went to the back. This wasn't pre-planned or anything like that. They just all went back to love on Marin, to celebrate Marin and the day that she was having and the, the entire family itself. It was powerful. And we celebrate those victories together, right? We've all seen the baptisms at our campuses where life groups are cheering on one another. They're hooping and they're hollering. That's what we want. We want to be enthusiastic about other people's accomplishments. We want to be cheerful and encouraging, and we want to be expectant of God doing big things, not only in those people's lives, but in our group. But we all know the reality is that, man, while we celebrate those moments, we are going to have hardships. And when we have those hardships, we need friends. We need friends to get us through those hard times. And here's the other thing you need to know about love. The last part of that verse, love always perseveres. We're going to have hard times. We're all going to go through them. But perseverance, right? It's a crazy word. It's, it's, it's a crazy thing to do. And it's great until you have to go through it yourself. But here's the beauty about being surrounded by people, being surrounded by love. Love hangs in there. Love walks in when other people are walking out. And love will help you persevere through those personal tough times. We're all going to get hurt. We're all going to go through painful moments. But love never quits. Love always perseveres, and you are surrounded by people that will love you, that will help you persevere through those moments. Those bonds, those, those bonds that you're, you're creating can be incredibly, incredibly life-changing. Let's take a look at Proverbs 18, verse 24. Some friendships do not last, but some friends are more loyal than brothers. That verse, that friendship, that connection, that's what we desire in our small groups. Now, if you're new to this, if you just signed up for a small group, or maybe you haven't really fully engaged and let loose in your small group, let me, let me encourage you to commit to that. Encourage you to get over your fears and connect with those that are surrounding you. Because here's the reality. We are better together because we belong together. We belong together. Romans 12 verse 5 says this, So in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. See, many parts form one body. Many groups make up our church. Many different things make up our campus, our church, our lives. It's powerful that we all belong and we all belong to God. See, God's going to use your group to transform lives, not just your own lives, not just your small group, but people that are in your workplace, people that are in your extended family. God's going to use your group and use you to transform lives. I used the word earlier. I told you to look around at your flock, at your tribe, at your crew. But the reality is, take a minute and look around at your family. That's powerful. Remember that love protects, love trusts, love hopes, love perseveres. And your small group can live that out. God does powerful stuff through groups. I'm, I'm telling you that personally, I'm not the man who I would be without God using my small group. And, and my family's not on the trajectory that it would be on if God hadn't really used my small group to help me lead my family. And this is all done, all done. God used my group to show me that we are better together and that we belong together. Hey guys, take a second 
enjoy one another, celebrate the family that you're in, talk through these, these discussion questions, and next week we're gonna talk about growing together.